Welcome to the first lesson of the seventh module which is on deflection of beams part 1. Uh, in fact, in the last two modules we have looked into several aspects of beam bending, how to evaluate the bending moment and shear force in a beam which is loaded and consequently we have evaluated the bending and shear stresses in a beam. Now, while evaluating the bending stress in a beam, you must, you must have looked into that we have taken the curvature of the beam into effect and consequently we have derived the bending formula. Now, while uh, looking into the bending formula, we have taken the help of the curvature of the beam, but as such we have not derived any equation for the curvature of the beam or we have not derived any equation for the elastic curve. Now, in this particular lesson, we are going to look into the differential equation and consequently the equation of elastic curve and how do we find the deformation in a beam. In fact, the deformation which often we call as a deflection of beam is of paramount importance uh, in our engineering application. You know the beam member when they are subjected to load undergoes deformation which we are terming as deflection when the axis of the beam moves in the vertical direction. Now, the question is this kind of movement of the beam uh, creates problems in our engineering structures. Say for example, uh, the floor on which we are moving basically uh, they are supported on beams. Now, if for some loading the beam undergoes movement in the vertical direction, if it deflects then the floor also deflects and as a result it becomes unusable. That means, uh, it becomes uncomfortable for the persons to use it or whoever will be moving over the floor. If you talk about any mechanical component, if it undergoes deformation, then there is a possibility that it will lose its alignment and in the consequence, the there could be failure of the machine parts. Hence, it is very important to evaluate the deflection in a beam member. And it is expected that once this particular lesson is completed, one should be able to understand the concept of deflection of beams under different loading conditions. One should be able to derive the basic differential equation of the deflection curve. Also, one should be in a position to evaluate deflections in beams for different loading conditions. Hence, the scope of this particular lesson includes the aspects we will be looking into the previous uh, lesson which we have discussed. It includes the concept of deflection of beams for different loading. It includes the derivation of differential equation and consequently the equation of elastic curve for beam and it also it includes uh, some examples for evaluation of deflection in beams for different loadings. Now, let us look into the answers of the questions which we had posed last time. In fact, uh, in the last lesson we had discussed aspects of shearing stresses and hence uh, we have the questions pertaining to that aspect and the questions are related to that. The first question is in a beam with rectangular cross section, what is the maximum value of shear stress and where does it occur? Now, this aspect we had discussed let us look uh, once again that in a beam having a rectangular cross section of width b and height uh, h, uh, when they are subjected to loads and thereby the shear forces, they are subjected to the shearing stress and the distribution of the shear stress is as this, it is a parabolic distribution having maximum shear stress at the neutral axis which we call as tau max and the shearing stresses at the outer surface is there 0 and it varies in a parabolic manner and the maximum shear stress is given by this expression which is 3 by 2 v by a and we calculate if you remember the tau as equals to v q by i b where v is the shear force in the section where we are calculating the stress, q is the a first moment of the area uh, depending on at which section we are evaluating the stress. Supposing if we are evaluating the stress at this particular section which is at a distance of uh, y 1, then q is the a moment of this particular hatched area with reference to the neutral axis. 
i is the moment of inertia of the cross section with respect to the neutral axis and b is the width of the section and this uh, gives us the maximum value when y 1 equals to 0 which is at the neutral axis and that is the value of the tau max and thereby if we compute it becomes 3 by 2 v by a, a is the cross sectional area b times h. So, the maximum shear stress occurs at the neutral axis and for a rectangular section the maximum value is 3 by 2 v by a. Now, the next question posed was that in a beam with circular cross section, what is the maximum value of shear stress? Now, this aspect also we have uh, discussed in the last lesson, wherein uh, we have said that we cannot use this tau equals to v q by i b for the entire cross section of the circular cross section of the member. However, we can apply at the neutral axis, uh, wherein the stress distribution is parallel to the y axis and thereby we can apply this expression v q by i b and consequently if we compute the maximum shear stress which we get at the neutral axis is equals to 4 third v by a and this again we compute from v q by i b and q is the moment of the area above the section where we are considering the shear stress which is uh, neutral axis in this particular case. So, the maximum value of uh, shear stress for the circular cross section is 4 third v by a, where again a is the cross sectional area of the circular section. And the lastly, uh, we had the question that what is meant by average shear stress. Now, as you can see over the cross section, the distribution of the shear stress say for example, when we are dealing with rectangular cross section, we have seen that the distribution is a parabolic one and having the maximum value of the shear stress at the neutral axis. Now, many a times if we like to evaluate quickly a value of the shear stress for engineering applications, many a times we need to uh, get a first hand information about the stress and if we like to evaluate quickly, then instead of calculating this parabolic distribution, many a times we assume that the stress as if is uniformly distributed about the entire depth. And if we consider say this particular stress as the average stress, let us call this as tau average, uh, which has its value uniform over the entire depth. Now, when we do that, we take the area of this particular rectangular configuration, which is uniform over the entire depth equivalent to the area corresponding to the distribution, which we get from 0 to the maximum value. Now, if we say the tau average is this weight, the area of this rectangle is tau average times h and this should be equal to the area under the curve with the actual distribution of the shear stress which is two third of h times tau max. Now, as we have seen earlier the tau max is 3 by 2 times v by a where v is the shear force and a is the cross sectional area. So, this gets cancelled. So, we have tau average into h is equals to h into v by a. So, thereby tau average gives us a value of uh, v by a, tau average is equals to v by a. Now, where v is the shear force and a is the cross sectional area and as you can see uh, we can we are assuming that as if the stress is uniformly distributed over the entire cross section and that is why it is called as average. So, shear stress distributed uniformly over the cross section is termed as the average shear stress and is calculated uh, the shear force divided by the cross sectional area will give us the value of the tau average. So, these were the questions which uh, were posed uh, last time and these are the answers corresponding to that. Now, having looked into these aspects of the shear stress, let us uh, look into the aspects of the elastic curve based on which we arrive at the differential equation. Now, let us consider a segment of the beam, let us say this is the origin O along the member axis beam axis, uh, this particular point is A which is at a distance of x from the origin. Now, let us assume that this particular beam undergoes deformation in the positive direction. Now, this is the y positive direction and we assume that the member undergoes deformation in the positive y direction 
and uh, under after deformation this is the deformed configuration and the point A moves to A dashed. Now, if you remember we had said that the beam axis when it undergoes deformation it does not stretches that means we had looked into while deriving the bending formula that the strain at the neutral axis level is 0. So, we assume that there is no stretching of the axis of the beam. Now, let us assume that this particular point if we consider a small segment after A, uh, we call this as a distance A B having a length d x and if we exaggerate this particular figure and plot it over here, it looks like this that this is d x, this is A and this is B. After deformation, this is uh, A dashed and this is B dashed. Now, A point A has undergone a deformation which is y which is indicated over here. Consequently, over a small distance d x, the point B has undergone a deformation which is y plus d y. So, this particular stretch is d y. Also, at this point the deformation I mean the slope of this particular axis if we call theta at this point over the length d x in the undergoes small change we call this as theta plus d theta. The radius of curvature of this beam axis is rho. Now, over this particular segment d x the angle it sustains at the center is d theta. So, if we consider since our based on our assumption that the beam axis does not undergo any stretching hence this particular curved part also is d x. So, from this particular triangular configuration we can say that d y by d x is sin theta and this is what is written here d y by d x is equal to sin theta and theta being small because we assume that the beam undergoes a very small deformation and thereby the slope is very small theta is small hence sin theta can be represented in terms of theta. So, d y d x equals to sin theta is equals to theta. Also this particular arc length d x can be written in terms of theta as rho times d theta. So, d x is equals to rho times d theta. So, from this we can write that 1 by rho is equals to d theta d x and in place of theta if we substitute d y d x. So, d d x of d y d x it gives us d 2 y d x 2. So, 1 by rho is equals to d 2 y d x 2 this is the second order differential of y with respect to x uh, and this is our curvature. If you remember from the previous modules uh, lecture that we had curvature is equals to 1 by rho. Hence, now if we write down that 1 by rho as we have just now seen is equals to d 2 y d x 2 earlier while evaluating the beam bending formula we have obtained that 1 by rho is equals to m by e i and thereby if we equate these two we get d 2 y d x 2 is equals to m by e i or m is equals to or e i d 2 y d x 2 is equals to m. This is what we call as the differential equation of the elastic curve. Now, this particular differential equation gives us that how the deflection curve the beam axis which was straight before bending after bending it deforms and it takes a shape based I mean from this particular equation we can arrive at that what will be the shape of this particular deformed axis after it has undergone the reformation. And this particular parameter E i is termed as the flexural rigidity of the beam E i is called as the flexural, flexural rigidity. Well, now from the differential equation which we have obtained, if we integrate once the differential equation which we have E i d 2 y d x 2 is equals to the bending moment m. Now, if we integrate this, we get this that E i y dash indicates it is d y d x, y dash stands for d y d x. Now, E y dash E i y dash is equals to integral 
m d x plus a constant of integration c 1. Now, if we integrate this equation once again, so second integration yields that e i y is equals to w integral m d x over d x and plus c 1 x plus c 2, where c 1 and c 2 are the unknown constants and these constant constants are to be evaluated from the given boundary conditions or known boundary conditions of the beam. Now, from these in fact, we can write y as a function of x, because moment uh, is a function of x in the beam as we have seen in the past and uh, y can be evaluated along the length of the beam. So, at different point we can get the value of y and if we plot that, if we plot the value of y along the length of the beam that gives us the deflection curve or the elastic the movement of the elastic curve. Now, this particular expression we call as the equation of elastic curve. So, as we have seen now that we have first derived the differential equation of the elastic curve and subsequently now we have completed the equation of the elastic curve. Now, making use of this differential equation which is uh, written as a function of the beam, uh, beam bending moment. Now, we can compute the value of the or the equation of the elastic curve or we can compute deflection at any point along the length of the beam. Well, now uh, if we look into the aspects what we whatever we have evaluated so far, y gives us the deflection of the elastic curve theta which is uh, the first derivative of y uh, which we call as y dash gives us the slope of elastic curve. That means, if we have the beam uh, if we have the deflection of this form then if we take a tangent at any point on the elastic curve, this gives us the value of the slope theta, which is d y d x, the derivative of the deflection curve. Second derivative subsequently give us the value of the moment, which is the differential equation for the elastic curve that e y e i d 2 y d x 2 is equals to the moment. Now, in the previous lesson we have seen that the shear force V is equals to the rate of change of the bending moment with a negative sign. So, V is equals to minus d m d x and m as we have seen in terms of this differential form as E i d 2 i d x 2. So, this is minus d d x of E i d 2 i d x 2. So, this gives us that minus E i d 3 y d x 3 is the value of the shear or E i d 3 i d x 3 is equals to minus V. And also we have seen that q is equals to d v d x and if we substitute for, for the v which is the second derivative of this moment gives us the value of e i minus e i d 4 y d x 4 this is equals to the loading q or e i d 4 y d x 4 is equals to minus q. So, these are the different forms of the governing equation, governing differential equation which we have obtained that E i d 2 i d x 2 is equals to moment. From this we can derive the other relationships as well. Now, as we have looked into now that E i d 4 y d x 4 is equals to minus q. This is the differential equation if we write in terms of load. We have seen that the differential equation in terms of the bending moment which is E i d 2 y d x 2 equals to m. Now, also we can write E i d 4 y d x 4 is equals to minus of the loading q. Now, if we integrate this we get E i d 3 y d x 3 is equals to minus q d x plus c 1. Now, if you remember E i d 3 y d x 3 is nothing but equals to minus v. So, minus v equals to minus q d x plus c 1. Now, this if we write as equals to q d x now minus c 1 now this is this is being constant uh, we can write this as a modified form say c 1 hat. Now, v equals to q d x plus a constant this expression we had seen earlier when we had uh, evaluated the shear force and the bending moment and there you had looked into that q is equals to d v d x and thereby v was integral q d x plus a constant term. Now, when you are, so this particular expression we had arrived at from the equilibrium of a small section which we had set, taken out from the whole beam. 
So, this particular expression represents the equilibrium of the loading system. Subsequently, in fact, we have seen that the moment is a dm dx, the derivative of the moment is equals to CR, so V equals to minus dm dx. So, if we compute that from this particular expression, we can get m as integral of q dx plus c 1 x plus c 2 and this is what is over here and this is our moment e i d 2 y d x 2 and hence this particular set of equations represents the equilibrium of the beam segment and further integration of this gives us the value of the slope and corresponding deflection. Now, if you look into the constants which are associated with this particular set of equations like c 1 and c 2, uh, these can be evaluated from the boundary conditions of a beam from the known values of the C r and the moment. And we call that these particular constants can be evaluated from the static boundary conditions. So, this is what is written over here that C 1 and C 2 we can compute from the static boundary conditions. Now, for this uh, d y d x and y we have the constant C 3 and C 4 and these constants C 3 and C 4 uh, are evaluated from the relationship of the deflection and the slope of the beam and these boundary conditions are called as the kinematic boundary conditions. So, C 3 and C 4 are evaluated from the kinematic boundary condition. So, you see that there are two sets of boundary conditions which we need in fact, for evaluation of these unknown constants, they are the static boundary conditions or the kinematic boundary conditions and this kinematics in a sense that after the deformation of the beam, it undergoes movement and it has some slope and the deformation and those boundary conditions if we adopt, we can evaluate the value of C 3 and C 4. Well, let us look into the boundary conditions that uh, we come across. Now, if we have a fixed support for a beam, now at this support as we have seen in the earlier um, uh, lessons that it does not allow any movement. So, the deformation or the displacement of this particular point is 0 and consequently it does not allow any rotation as well at this point and hence the d y d x or the theta also is 0 and both the conditions are the kinematic conditions. In a, in a hinge support and a roller support, we know that the, the vertical displacement is constrained and thereby y is 0 and also at a hinge support, it cannot resist any bending and thereby it gives rise to the slope. So, we have the bending moment at this point equals to 0. So, for a hinge or a roller support, we have the vertical displacement is 0, which is a kinematic condition and the moment equals to 0, which is a static boundary condition. And for a free end, uh, since it undergoes both displacement as well as rotation. Now, here we have the boundary conditions which are basically static boundary conditions, the moment equals to 0 and the shear force equals to 0 at this particular point. So, these are the different uh, support conditions which we have seen in the past that a beam is supported on some supports. So, this kind of supports could be fixed support or hinge support or roller support or it could be free on one end and fixed at the other as we have seen in case of a cantilever beam. So, any combinations of these supports give us the appropriate uh, configuration of a beam and when such beams are loaded, they undergo deformation and because of those uh, deformation, we need to evaluate now what will be the deflection and the slope because of the loading. Now, in this particular case while deriving the equation for the elastic curve, we have considered that the deformation is a small one and thereby uh, we said that the axial ax axis of the beam when it undergoes deformation does not stretches the length d x remains d x. But supposing if we have a very large deformation of the beam, if the deflection is very large, then we cannot make this uh, approximation and thereby the curvature term that 1 by rho takes this particular form and the whole form has to be taken into account for evaluating the uh, differential equation for the elastic curve. 
Hence, the expression which we have derived here, they are suitable for small deformation only and for large deformation, this is not applicable. We will have to use the curvature uh, in terms of this expression. We are not going to uh, the detailed derivation of this, but for your information that for a large deformation of the beam, the curvature uh, term is to be used with this particular expression. Well, uh, let us look into the sign convention one ag once again, so that uh, uh, we get acquainted with the uh, when we will deal with the problems, you do not have any uh, uh, problem as such. Like uh, we had considered for a beam segment, this is a beam segment having uh, with d x and loading on this as q. Uh, on the right hand side, we have the shear force which is uh, pointing upwards to the positive y direction and on the left side, we have downward as the positive shear and this is the positive bending moment which is uh, in an anticlockwise form on the right hand side and a clockwise form on the left hand side. And consequently, we had obtained the relationship which is V equals to minus d m d x and d v d x equals to q. Now, these relationships we have used while uh, deriving the uh, differential equations and its different form of the governing differential equation. We have used E i d 2 i d x 2 equals to bending moment and subsequently when we have taken the derivative, we have taken that d m d x as minus v and d v d x as q. So, this we have used while devi uh, deriving the different forms of the governing equation. Now, here so to remind that again, so E i d 2 i d x 2 is equals to moment considering the moment positive as anti clockwise on the right hand side. Now, E i d 4 y d x 4 is equals to minus q. Now, please note over here that the loading q which is in fact in the opposite direction of our positive y axis, y axis positive is upward. So, any loading if it is directed upward is positive and since this q is pointing downwards. So, q is negative and rightly that we have E i d 4 y d x 4 uh, d x 4 is equals to minus q and also we have E i d 3 y d x 3 as minus v with the positive c r pointing upward. So, these are the expressions which we use for evaluating the equation of the deflection curve y. Now, E i d 2 y d x 2 equals to m and E i d 4 y d x 4 equals to minus q, these are the two expressions which are widely used. Uh, we do not use this particular expression very frequently, which is E i d 3 y d x 3 equals to minus v. However, any of these three equations can be used for evaluating the uh, equation of the elastic curve, which is y. y as a function of x, we can evaluate and thereby at any point along the length of the beam member, we can compute the value of y and thereby the plot which we get will give you the uh, elastic curve or the deformed shape of the particular beam after it is loaded. Well, having looked into these uh, equations for the elastic curve, uh, let us look into some example problems. Now, before we go into the example problems of uh, this particular aspect, let us look into the example which I had uh, given you last time, which is related to the evaluation of the shearing stress. Now, if you remember that a beam of T cross section is formed using nails as shown in the figure. Now, here there are two rectangular components, one is a horizontal one, another one is a vertical one and these two separate units are joined together by providing a nail along the length of the beam and the nails are provided at an interval. Now, the shear force which is acting in the section is 872 Newton and the nail carries 400 Newton in the shear. Now, at this interface where two blocks are getting connected together by nails and this nail when it will be subjected to a shearing force, it will be subjected to the shearing action. Now, this nail has a resistive power, it can resist 400 Newton of shearing load. Now, we will have to find out that at what spacing of these nails along the length of the beam we can provide, so that it 
can withstand that amount of load. That means, the shear force in each nail should not exceed the allowable limit. If it is less than that, then it can withstand that load. So, that is the uh, aspect you will have to evaluate, what is the maximum spacing, allowable spacing of such nails. Well, this is an interesting one, let us look into the uh, aspect here. Now, in this particular figure, we have separated out the, the wave part of the section, this particular part is uh, shown over here. Now, this is the face of the beam cross section. Now, here the positive shear is acting in this particular direction, which is positive upward. Now, we have the complementary shear, which is acting on this phase, perpendicular phase, which is acting in this form and this is what is shown in over here and of course, we have the shear in other direction as well. Now, along this length of the beam, these are the nails which are placed, which are spaced at a spacing of p. So, if we can compute the level of shear stress that is acting at this particular level, then uh, we know how much shearing stress will be acting at this phase and once we know the shearing stress on this phase, we know how much shear force this particular bolts are to be resisted uh, in terms of the shearing stress. So, if we like to compute the shearing stress at this particular cross section, then we need to take this particular area which is above this section and take the moment of this area with respect to the neutral axis. Now, so first we will have to find out the position of the neutral axis of the cross section and if we say that this is y bar from the top, then take the moment of all these segments with the top part of it. So, first segment is 120 by 30. So, 120 by 30 into 15 is the moment of that area with respect to the top line plus the area of this bottom part the wave is 120 times 30 times this is 60 plus 30 is 90 divided by the area of the whole uh, cross section which is 120 times 30 plus 120 times 30 and this gives us a value of y bar equals to 52.5 millimeter from the top. Now, we got to evaluate the moment of inertia of this particular cross section with respect to the neutral axis. So, I neutral axis again we compute for we divide the whole of the cross section into two rectangles. The first rectangle 120 by 30, uh, it has moment of inertia about its own axis as 120 times 30 cube by 12 plus 120 times 30 times its distance its CG distance from the neutral axis is 37.5, 52.5 minus 15 uh, square plus for this is 30 times 120 cube by 12 plus area 120 times 30 and 60 plus 30 90, 90 minus 52.5 will give you 37.5 square. So, this is the moment of inertia of the section which is 14.715 into 10 to the power 6 millimeter to the power 4. Now, from the expression of tau equals to V q by I b, V in the section is given as 872 Newton. Now, q is the moment of the area above the section where we are evaluating the shear stress, we are evaluating shear stress at this section and the area above that is 120 times 30. So, 120 times 30 and its neutral axis, its uh, C g is uh, 15 from the top and di distance of the neutral axis of its C g from the uh, C g from the neutral axis is equals to 37.5, 52.5 minus 15 divided by i and b here is 30. So, this gives us a value of shearing stress at this interface. So, along this lane, we have a shear stress of 0.27 Newton per millimeter square. Now, if these nails are spaced at p millimeter apart, then if I consider this particular nail, it has an influence area half of this length and half of this length. So, this much of length multiplied by this width, width is 30 multiplied by p. So, that is the area multiplied by the shearing stress that is acting at that interface will give the force that this particular nail can withstand. And since a nail can withstand a maximum shear force of 400 Newton, if we equate to that, we get a value of P as equals to 49.4 millimeter. So, that means, this particular nails can be spaced at a maximum 
distance of 49.4 millimeter. We can keep a lower value than 49.4 millimeter, but we cannot exceed this particular that is the maximum value of the spacing of the nails uh, that can be provided. So, that the shear stress in the nail does not exceed 400 Newton. Now, if we go beyond that, then the shear stress, I mean the shear capacity of the bolt will go beyond 400 Newton and as a result the bolt will not be able to withstand and the cross section and the whole section will fail. So, uh, this is the value of the spacing of the nails that are to be provided, so that the member becomes safe. Well, that was the problem for the shear stress. Now, let us come back to this uh, the equation of the elastic curve. Now, that we have a simply supported beam which is subjected to a uniformly distributed q per unit length. Now, what we will have to do is that we will have to determine the equation of the deflection curve. This is the first thing we will have to do. This is number 1. Secondly, we will have to find out the maximum deflection and the rotations at the supports. Now, the flexural rigidity E i is constant for the entire beam. So, we will have to determine the equation of the elastic curve and secondly the maximum deflection and the rotations at the support points. So, to do that uh, then let us first evaluate the reactive forces as we have done in the past. Now, as you know this is a hinge support. So, you have the vertical support I mean vertical reactive force and the horizontal reactive force and this being a roller support you have a vertical reactive force. So, if we call this as A, this as B, then this is R A, this is R B and this is H A. Now, since there are no horizontal load in this beam, so summation of horizontal force equals to 0 will give us that H A is equals to 0. Now, we will have to compute the value of R A and R B and as we have seen in the past, this is a symmetrical beam subjected to a symmetrical loading. Hence, the value of R A and R B is equals to Q times L by 2, this is the total load. Now, this we can compute from R A plus R B equals to total load Q L and if we take the moment of all the forces with respect to one of the supports, you get the value of R A and then you can compute from the vertical equilibrium the value of R B and you will get the value of R A and R B as equals to Q L by 2. Now, let us employ the differential equation of the elastic curve as we have derived now. Now, so we have the beam in which we have evaluated the value of the reactive forces R A and R B and this we have seen as equals to Q L by 2 and Q is the uniformly distributed load that is acting on the beam. Now, if I take a segment at a distance of x, a free body of this particular part will yield that you have the reactive force R A here, you have the Q and on this cut we will have the shear force V and bending moment M. These are the positive direction of V and M as we have seen. Now, if we compute if we take the this is a value of q. Now, if we take the and this mind that at a distance of x from a. Now, if we take the moment of all the forces uh, with respect to this particular point, then we write m which is in an anti clockwise direction, then minus r a into x minus this is minus and q cause a moment which is anti clockwise. So, plus q into x into x by 2 this is equals to 0. So, the value of bending moment m is equals to r a is q l by 2. So, q l by 2 x minus q x square by 2. So, this is the value of the bending moment that we have. Now, as we have seen that E i d 2 y d x 2 is equals to bending moment m. This is our differential equation for the elastic curve. Since we are going to find out the equation of the elastic curve, we start from this particular point. 
and as we have seen now m is equals to q l by 2 x minus q x by x square by 2. So, this is equals to q l by 2 x minus q x square by 2. Now, if we integrate this we have e i d y d x as equals to q l by 2 times x square by 2 minus q by 2 x cube by 3 plus c 1 is the constant of integration. Then further if we integrate this we have e i y as equals to q l by 4 x cube by 3 minus q by 6 x 4 by 4 plus c 1 x plus c 2. So, this is the equation of the elastic curve with the unknown constant c 1 and c 2. Now, we will have to evaluate the values of c 1 and c 2 with the help of boundary conditions. Now, what are the boundary conditions we have for this simply supported beam? Now, if we look into the deflected profile of this, the beam is going to the curve which we have the axis is going to deform is going to deform in this form. Now, at since this is hinge support and this is roller support at x equals to 0 the deflection is 0 and also at x equals to L y is equals to 0. So, these are the two conditions we have. Now, if we substitute these conditions you see the first of the conditions at x equals to 0 y equals to 0 if we substitute in this equation we find that c 2 is equals to 0. So, now that if we substitute the second condition that at x equals to l y equals to 0. So, if we substitute over here for x we substitute the value of l and y as 0 and then consequently let us see what we get. We get 0 as equals to q l by 12 and we have l. So, l cube minus q by 24 you have l to the power 4 plus c 1 times l. So, this gives us a value of c 1. Now, if we compute this we get c 1 as equals to minus q l cube by 24. So, the equation of the deflection curve E i y this is equals to we get as q l by 12 times x cube minus q by 24 times x to the power 4 minus q l cube by 24 times x. So, this is the value of the or this is the expression of the elastic curve for the beam. So, at any point x we can get the value of y. Now, if we like to compute now as you can see that we have the beam and we have now the expression for y at any x we can compute the value of uh, y. Now, since this particular beam is symmetrically loaded with uniformly distributed load. Now, it is expected that we will have the maximum deformation at the center. Now, if we compute the value of the deflection at the center that means, if we com compute y at x equals to L y 2 let us see what we get the value of y as. So, E i y as equals to q L by 12. Now, this is L cube by 8 minus q by 24 times L 4 by 16 minus q L cube by 24 times L by 2. So, this gives us a value of if we compute this, this comes as uh, an expression of q L 4 by 96 minus q L 4 by 384 minus q L 4 by 48. 
and if we compute this it comes as minus 5 q L 4 by 384. Now, in fact, this is the value of the deflection. So, y at L by 2 is equals to minus 5 q L 4 by 384 e i. Now, taking e i on the other side. So, this is the value of the deflection at the center of the beam. Now, here you note that we have a sign which is minus, this indicates that our positive y direction is upward, hence the deflection curve is towards the down, down side of the beam axis. So, this is the deflected shape of the beam, this is the uh, y at L by 2. So, it goes from 0 here, goes to L by 2, from here again it goes here. So, the value here which we call as the maximum displacement delta max as equals to 5 q L 4 by 384 e i. Now, once we have the expression for the deflection curve e i y equals to this. Now, we can take the derivative of this and can compute the value of the slope at this point or we have already have the expression for the d y d x which is this and as we have seen that uh, the value of c 1 we have already obtained. If we substitute over here, we can get the value of d y d x. So, we can compute the value of the slope at x equal to 0 and at x equals to l. Now, let us compute the value of the uh, deflection I mean slope at the support points. So, this is the value of the deflection that we have obtained. Now, if we compute the value of d y d x, this is of course, uh, e i d y d x, we are taking the derivative of that. So, this is q l by 12. So, this is 3 x square minus q by 24, this is 4 x cube minus q l cube by 24, because the x goes up. So, this is the value of e i d y d x and d y d x at x equals to 0, since these are function of x. So, this goes up. So, we have minus q l cube by 24. Now, here if you note it again this is given as negative. Now, here uh, this is the deflected curve as we have obtained. Now, if we take the tangent of this uh, elastic curve at this particular point, then this this curve with this, this rotation is in a clockwise direction. So, this particular rotation is in the clockwise direction. Now, as we have seen that in a beam segment, when we consider the uh, positive bending moment that is in an anti clockwise direction and consequently, since this is in a clockwise direction, we say this theta as negative which is uh, clockwise. Now, if we compute the value of the rotation at the other end at x equals to l, then in this particular expression if we substitute x as l, then let us see what we get the value as. Let us compute the value of uh, d y d x at x equals to l. So, e i d y d x this is equals to now this is l square. So, q l cube by 4 minus uh, this is l cube. So, this is q l cube by 6 and minus this is q l cube by 24. So, we have 6 minus 4 minus 1 by 24 times q l cube. So, here you get this as q l cube by 24 and find that here we get positive. Now, here if you look into if you take a tangent at this particular point, the rotation here again is an anti clockwise direction and according to our nomenclature or the sign convention, this is positive. So, theta b is equals to plus q l cube by 24. So, we have theta a uh, computed the theta at uh, support a and theta at support b. So, these are the uh, aspects we were uh, required to compute 
we have computed first the equation of the deflection curve and consequently we have computed the deflection at the center of the beam which is the maximum deflection in this particular case and consequently we have computed the value of the rotation at A and B as the support points. Well, uh, let us look into, so this is the uh, final form of the uh, deflected form of the beam that when it is loaded you have the deflected curve and this is the maximum deflection which we have at the center and this rotation we have obtained as theta A uh, which is negative and this rotation is theta B which is uh, positive because counterclockwise and this is the shape of the deflection curve. Now, if we uh, look into the another problem where the beam supports are identical that means, we have a hinge support over here and a roller support here, but instead of a uniformly distributed load, we have a concentrated load P and to make this uh, evaluation of the deflection curve and to evaluate the deflection a general one, uh, the load is placed uh, not symmetrically, but in an unsymmetric form. The load is located at a distance of A uh, from support A and uh, it is at a distance of B from support B and the length of the beam or the span of the beam is L. Now, what you will have to do is that you will have to evaluate the equation of the deflection curve and you will have to evaluate the maximum deflection also you will have to find out the rotation at the support. Now, flexural rigidity of the beam E i is constant throughout the beam. Now, as usual what we need to do is uh, the hinge support you will have the vertical reactive force and the horizontal force and a roller support will have a vertical force. So, uh, we call as usual this as R a H a and this as R b. Now, H a will be equals to 0 as we do not have any horizontal load in this beam. Now, if we take the moment of R a or the moment of R a and the load with respect to b, then we have R a into L is equals to which is in a clockwise direction and p times b is an anti clockwise direction. So, R a is equals to p b by L and since R a plus R b equals to p, so R b will be equals to p minus p b by L. So, that is equals to p a by L. So, these are the values of the uh, reactive forces R a and R b. Now, here you look into that that we have two segments, this is segment 1 and this is segment 2 and in these two different segments our bending moment expression will be different. So, now let us compute the value of the bending moment uh, for these two segments. Now, we have the beam, this is R a and this is R b and you have the load here as p. Now, for the segment 1, if I take a free body here, if I take a cart here and draw the free body diagram, then the bending, this is the shear force, this is the bending moment m and this distance is at a distance of x from the support a. So, the bending moment m is equals to r a times x, which is equals to p b x by l and the validity of this particular moment is from this particular point up to the load point. So, the validity is 0 less than x less than a. Now, if I take a free body of this particular segment taking a cart over here, if we take the free body of this particular part, then we have the reactive force here, the load here. Now, this is at a distance of a and the segment we have taken at a distance of x from the support and as usual you have the shear force and the bending moment over here and let us call this as moment m and this is p. So, the moment expression which we get at this particular point is equals to m is equals to this is r a r a into x minus p into x minus a and r a being p b by l. So, this is p b x by L minus P into X minus A and the range of the validity of this is A less than X less than L. So, these are the two moment values that we have. Now, once we get the expression for the moment, then we can write down our differential equation which is E i d 2 y 
d x 2, this is equals to moment and we write for the two segments differently that for the segment 1, this is the expression for the bending moment, for the segment 2, this is the expression for the bending moment and consequently we integrate it 1 by 1 and then in the first step of integration, we get d y d x and in the second step, we get y and that gives us the expression for the deflection curve. Now, once you solve this, since we have two different segments and two different equations, so thereby you will be land up with four unknown constants and these four unknown constants are to be evaluated for from the four unknown, I mean known boundary conditions. Now, this problem is set for you, look into it, we will discuss how to solve those unknown constants and how to arrive at the deflection curve in the next lesson. Well, to summarize then, in this particular lesson, we have included the concept of deflection of beams for different loadings and of course, we have discussed the previous uh, lessons some aspects as well. Then uh, we have looked into the derivation of the equation of elastic curve, uh, the differential equation first we have derived and consequently we have derived the elastic equation for the uh, equation for the elastic curve. Then we have looked into some examples to how to evaluate the deflection of beams for different loading. Now, these are the questions set for you, the what is the differential equation of elastic curve in a beam, what is the equation of elastic curve of beams and what is the value of maximum deflection in a simply supported beam subjected to uniformly distributed load of intensity W. Now, answers for this I will give you in the next lesson. Thank you for your attention.